So you're probably thinking it's time to upgrade and get yourself a new laptop and you're probably thinking, okay, let me go with Intel, but you're seeing something called Core Ultra, there's a Core i9 and you're going, ah, I have no idea, right? Well, fear not, you're right here, but I'll help you out to find out which might be the best Intel processor for you. Now, if you join us for the very first time, go ahead and smash that subscribe button notification icon so you can watch more videos like this on this channel. And without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and find out what laptop is best for you. We have four laptops here and they vary in, in terms of the processors you have in them. Starting off here, we do have the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 uh, 360. This comes with an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. Uh, this has an integrated GPU, the Intel Arc GPU, and that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, processor. Now you do have up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. This also is a laptop with a touch screen. It's uh, 360, which means you can flip it, tent it, all the different modes. And this weighs under th uh, 3.5 pounds. Pretty nice and comfortable laptop at 16 inches. Then we move over to the Dell XPS 16. It's a 16 inch laptop. Uh, this also has a touch screen as well, but this is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 as well. It does have an integrated Arc GPU, but also comes with a uh, RTX 4070 as well. You can go up to a 4070, you can do all the way lower to a 4050. So you have a dedicated GPU built in. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM or 32, depending on your configuration. Weighs about 3.6 pounds. And this is geared to more creators and also some, some decent gaming on here. Now, moving along, we have the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. Now, now this comes with an Intel Core Ultra 9, which is different from a Core Ultra 7 that we saw with the other two laptops, and also comes with a Creator Studio 4070. Now, this should give you, of course, improved performance with a Core Ultra 9, as well as also the 4070 GPU. It does have a HDMI port out, which is pretty nice, and a touch screen as well. Plus it's also a 16 inch laptop. Uh, by the way, all the laptops are 16 inches, which is kind of like a new standard everyone wants to go with. I, I kind of like 15. Now the final laptop here is a gaming laptop. This is the HP Omen Transcend 16. Now this laptop here, has everything you need in terms of ports. You've got full USB, you've got Thunderbolt, you've got HDMI, Ethernet port, you name it. But it comes with an Intel Core i9 processor in here. And of course, a gaming keyboard from HyperX, uh, display, you name it. As gamers, this is kind of what you're looking for. And this is uh, under five pounds, uh, about four, roughly around 4.3 uh, thereabouts. You see that on screen anyway. So. We have all these processors. I just listed the Intel Core Ultra 7, uh, the Intel Core Ultra 9, and the Intel Core i9. What are the differences with them? So we went ahead and did some benchmarks on there to see what kind of benchmark numbers we're getting from these processors. And this is what we have here. So starting off with the Galaxy Book 4 360, that has a single core score of 1,743 and a multi-core score of 14,497. That is with the Intel uh, Core Ultra 7 155H. Now the Dell XPS uh, 16, which also has the same processor, has a multi-core score of 15,320 and a single core score of 1,758, slightly higher. Now I can't pretend to tell you why that's different, uh, but of course there's a, there's a dedicated GPU here, so that could add to it as well. Then we move over to the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. This of course comes with the Intel Core Ultra 9, which is a higher processor than these other two. And this has some very interesting numbers. Its single core score is higher at 1,805, but its multi-core score is lower at 13,991. Hmm. Can't tell you why that's the case, but you understand where those numbers are there. And then finally, end it off with a Core i9 processor for the HP Trans Omen Transcend 16. This has a single core score of 1,154 
and a blistering multi-core score of 18,749. So definitely we should expect this to be our best performer. To give you an idea of what that performance looks like in terms of gaming, we went ahead and played four games on all the systems. Those games were of course, um, Child of the Tomb Raider, Doom Eternal, and uh, Street Fighter VI as well as Tekken 8. So let's go ahead and see those games all side by side and uh, we'll give you a conclusion to what you should be picking. All right, so that was quite interesting. In terms of overall gaming performance, definitely, of course, the HP Omen 16, that is a gaming laptop, and that's where the Core i9 really shines. It showcases that it can run what you want to run quite effectively without any issues. And again, that HP Omen also has a 4070, similar to the other two laptops, the Dell Xperia 16 and the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. Now, when it comes to the Dell XPS 16 versus the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, which has the, um, a Core Ultra 9, we saw better performance from the Dell XPS 16 over the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra when it came to Street Fighter. Now, that being said, I feel that's more of a software issue than uh, a performance issue from Samsung with this device. So hopefully that gets fixed, but you can see similar results in terms of performance there. Now, the caveat here is in terms of price. The Dell XPS 16 goes for around 2,199 with this configuration with 4070. So does the Galaxy Book um, 4 Ultra. So that's about $3,000 for something that has a Core Ultra 7 or Core Ultra 9 with of course, a dedicated GPU. And then last in terms of just general performance is the Samsung Book 4, Galaxy Book 4. Now, this had some very decent performance in um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, was able to play Street Fighter at 1080p on low settings, which is still really good with the integrated graphics. And um, we did have some issues playing uh, Doom Eternal. It just was a black screen. So you kind of see where it all places down is that the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra with the Core Ultra 7 and its dedicated GPU can do light gaming for you and will do your day-to-day -day task. If you want to actually say edit contents, do some gaming, either something with a Core Ultra 7 or the Core Ultra 9 uh, with a dedicated GPU will do the trick for you there, most preferably a 4070 in my case. And of course, if you're a gamer, the Core i9 is the device for you. So hopefully this gives you a breakdown of what you should get. And in terms of the tiers of the processors, the lowest would be the Core Ultra 7 for you in this case, although there's a Core Ultra 5, by the way, but honestly, Core Ultra 7, uh, Core Ultra 7 with a dedicated GPU Core Ultra 9 with a dedicated GPU. And finally, of course, a Core i9 if you're looking for gaming with a dedicated GPU. Hopefully that makes sense. I know I didn't touch on the laptops themselves and all the different features, but I really wanna focus on the processors. Hopefully this gives you a better idea what to get and what to pick. So if you have any questions or any comments, let me know. If you wanna pick up any of these devices, use the links down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.